you there yet? You said five minutes. Technically, it's been more than five minutes. Let's just all start slowing down. Wow. Can you believe I found this online? Well, I guess it's not that secret a beast. Whoa. Who would leave this? From the hotel! They're so rusted! What's happening? Found stuff from the hotel in the sand. Thomason, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to talk to me today. First of all, between this and last night in Soho, I think this might officially make you the screen queen of 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might just be yes. like <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a, a title to hold. I don't think I don't think I'm deserving of that, but thank you. <laughs> I think I think like you've got two big horrors, two two horrors that people are very excited about seeing. So I think I want to bestow that crown upon you, Scream Queen of 2021. Congratulations. <laughs> it fits so perfectly. Um <laughs> knowing M. Night Shyamalan, knowing the 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 kind of films that he makes, uh, how difficult is it when you receive that script not to jump to the last page to see if he has done one of his famous plot twists? Um, it's, I mean, I, I'm never one to want to like give away what's or kind of give away what's going to happen in the story or like, I don't know. I just, I think if it's a good script, it's going to make you just like be really present and just like devouring the, the script as a whole as it should be and not kind of picking out kind of pieces or, or splitting it up and then put, trying to put it back together or whatever. Um, so I didn't, I did not have that desire to see to see the ending before before the time was right. Um, I kind of did it very chronologically. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, congrats! I think you've got a better self control than I would because I would want to know if he's done one of his famous twists or not. Um, <clears throat> not to. I don't want to spoil anything, obviously, um, but I think you're involved in this movie's scariest scene. Uh, yeah. It's yourself. Alex and Abby in the cave. Oh, yes. Yeah. I was freaking out uh, really? during that scene. Yeah. I was I was like properly like, I, I'm not sure if I can continue looking because I could kind of like, it's one of those scenes where you, your imagination is filling in stuff that you're not seeing. And then he, yeah. Shamala is giving glimpses of it. When you're doing a scene that intense, did you know at the time that you're like, this is going to, this is going to be the one people are talking about? Um, no, I think because when you're actually filming um, scenes like that or filming horror films or just even if it's a drama but there's some really in, in, intense stuff that the character is going through, um, oftentimes, and this isn't always the case, but if there's like stunt stuff and if it's very technical, that's what you're kind of focusing on like you're giving the emotional performance and during the take you're 100% there but you also have to think okay I don't want to actually punch this person in the face so how do I like kind of you know do it in a way that is safe but give the emotional intensity there are just so many things you're kind of thinking about at the same time um so and even when I watched old for the first time or when I watched last night in Soho for the first time I knew what was I knew pretty much exactly what was going to happen. So I, I was anticipating everything. So um, I didn't feel, I don't know, I wasn't watching it or experiencing the horror like you might have been when you had no idea what was going to happen. Um, but I'm happy to hear that that you were, that you got the scare factor there. <laughs> no, absolutely. Like I think that scene in particular is like, it's it's kind of scorched into my mind a bit as like one of the best horror scenes I've seen of the year. So, oh, wow. Uh, it's, it was it was fantastic. Um, and just just to finish up, like when you're working with horror icons like Shyamalan, when you're working with a genre, uh, like a brilliant genre director like Edgar Wright, do you does it feel different working with directors who are so brilliant in this genre? Do you know like you're in very safe hands when they're making horror movies like this? I think there is a sort of pressure because you know that they have a reputation. 
um, for being amazing at what they do. So you don't want to, you know, you want to, you want to do a good job so that you can, um, so you don't let them down, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think they're very, I don't know, I think to be able to pull film, films like old or like um, the films, amazing films that Edgar does in order to be able to pull them off, you have to be very specific in what you do. Um, and they both had the kind of whole story in their minds. So, um, and you don't always have the big picture as an actress or an actor because you're um, kind of more focused on on giving on a, giving a good performance. So you, it is important to be able to rely on them to, um, I don't know, just like have the whole film in, in mind rather than just your scenes and being able to fit it for it all to make sense together um, rather than separately, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's being a part of the bigger machine and then just understanding yes. that they they know exactly what they're doing. Thomason, yeah. thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, Crown still looks great and best of luck <laughs> with uh, everything else going forward. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. What is that? A message. We never leave each other. Nothing separates us. We're connected to something bigger. Oh no, we're here for a reason.